The Army embarked on a competition to replace the shadow unmanned aircraft system back in 2017 and evaluated a number of systems over the course of a year with soldiers and units. And those, those systems were Textron's Aerosond, L3 Harris's FVR-90, Martin UAV teaming with Northrop Grumman on the VBAT, and the Air Arcturus Jump-20. And Arcturus was actually purchased by AeroVironment, so now it is the AeroVironment Jump-20 aircraft. So now the Army is going to open up the competition again for a much bigger buy to replace the Shadow UAS. And we're seeing a lot of different UAS on the floor that could serve as a future tactical UAS. And many of the competitors from the previous round are back with improved systems. So we're taking a unique design that we believe meets all the requirements and then some. Um, it's designed for modularity, uh, e ease of assembly, disassembly, as well as it has a very large payload for this class for um, not only the FTUAS competition, but other opportunities. Okay, so what, when we're looking at a system like this, uh, what, do, what stands out in terms of Valancey's design? You know, why did, why did you want to partner with Valancey and ultimately buy Valancey uh, for this system so that you could compete with that for the Army's competition? Yeah, so very unique features with the eight rotors, um, the redundancy built in, also with the engine that has auto restart capability. Um, provides that damage tolerance as, as well as uh, fault tolerance to complete the mission, plus just the large capacity of payload that this can lift compared to the other competition um, offerings. Well, Dave, we're here at the Boeing Institute booth here, and we're looking at your submission for the future tactical unmanned aircraft system that the Army is looking to compete for a second increment very soon. What sets this offering apart? And you know, you have a lot of customer interest uh, across the board, but the Army is uh, nearing a, a competition right. again. So, and I'm hearing that the pool is deep. So, talk about what sets you apart here. Well, I think what sets us apart, first off, the you have to have a platform that you can support. I mean, to be able to make an unmanned aircraft is one thing. To be able to support it in the field, right, in the United States, around the world, that's not easy. To be able to produce at scale, that's not easy, uh, right? To be able to handle multiple payloads uh, easily without huge integration costs, that's not easy. We do that. The idea of operating this in a contested space, that's not easy. Off the shelf, just buying something off the shelf and hoping that it works in a contested environment, we offer all those type things in our solution. So you offered the Arizon HQ for the first round of competition with Future Tactical UAS for the Army. What did you learn and how did you adapt it to what you're offering for this one? Sure, so as you mentioned, uh, in the buy, try, and inform phase, we offered and demonstrated our Arizon Mark 4.7 hybrid quad. What you see here today is the 4.8 HQ. Uh, the soldier touch points for us were a fantastic opportunity to gather the soldiers' feedback, what they liked about the system, how they used it, but more importantly, what they wanted out of the, 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 the system, um, the ultimate system. What they wanted was more of it. So they wanted more payload capacity, they wanted more endurance. So like good soldiers of ourselves, we went back, we bulked up, and uh, we effectively doubled the system while keeping all of the goodness of the smaller system uh, still ingrained in it.